That's 138 hours you're gonna gain by saving one second on your cycle time. This machine behind me is one of the fastest machines in the world. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make it run as fast as possible. But before we get into that, I'm gonna have to go over the process and show you guys how we lay that out on a machine like this. So the way I lay out my processes on a Swiss machine works pretty much for every Swiss machine, whether it's a triple channel machine, a dual channel machine, or a nine channel machine like the one behind me. So let's lay out our order of operations and assign them accordingly. Now, as you may know, the multi-Swiss 826 has eight spindles. Two of these spindles are always taken up by the same two operations. Number one is our feed out and number eight is our cutoff. Now the feed out in this machine is a hydraulic actuated chuck that actually grabs the material and pulls it out. This takes a few seconds, so you can squeeze other operations on station one, but they need to be really short. And that's why in this process, I just put a spot drill in there. I pull and do the feed out, and then I come up and I spot the front of the part, and that's it for station one. Now station number two is just one tool. I turn the OD of the hex and I turn the OD of the threads. Nothing too crazy about that. The next station, station three, has two drills on it. I have my 218 drill for the minor diameter of my quarter 28 tap, and I have my 156 drill. So just two drills are gonna be on station three. Station four has the rough turning tool behind the threads, and it has a quarter 28 tap. That's all it takes up station four. Station five right here is my single point threading tool. Now this could take a different amount of passes depending on the material you're working at, so it's not too uncommon to put this on its own station, like I did on this part. Now this isn't a toaster oven, it's actually a live tool. And this is station six. This is gonna mill the hexagon on the front of the part. And the last station before the cutoff is our groove tool right here in station seven. This grooves behind the thread and it deburs the front and back of the thread. Now the last operation is the longest. And this one we have to pick off the part, cut off the part, transfer it, deburr it, and then eject it. And that's all gonna happen right here on the sub spindle. This is gonna be the most likely operation to hold us back here. So the part we're making today is an air fitting. Now air fittings like this are usually made in very, very large quantities. And it's very common for them to be run on multi-spindle machines like the one behind me. Now that we've gone over the whole process and everything, let's take a look at the software we're gonna to use to speed up this part. This is the TV Deco software that I showed you guys in an earlier video. So as you can see here, you have position one and spindle one. This is both the gang and the spindle for station one, all right? And as we go down this, it actually shows us how long each process is gonna take. So this is kind of like a timeline, right? So I can see station one right here is nowhere near as long as station two. So I don't even need to look at station one. What I need to do is I need to find my longest operation because on a multi-spindle machine, your longest operation is your cycle time. So let's scroll down. So if you look right down here, you'll see 8,000 milliseconds. TV Deco is gonna give you a really, really close representation of how fast the cycle time's actually going to be. So right now we're at 8,000 milliseconds, which is eight seconds. I wanna try to get this down to seven seconds. Now that might not sound like a lot, one second, but if you're running half a million parts, one second is a lot of time. Let's see here. Let's just see. So if you have half a million parts divided by 60 seconds divided by 60 minutes, so that's 138 hours you're gonna gain by saving one second on your cycle time. That's almost seven days. So your job will get done a week earlier if you're running high quantity parts and you get your cycle time to run one second faster, that's a whole work week. That is a ton of time, a ton of money, so this is why you need to know how to go in here and try to tweak these programs like this and get every single fraction of a second off you can. So let's do that. Whew, throw my phone. No. <laughs> so I'm gonna go through each and every individual operation and see where I can save time at all, okay? So what this machine's gonna do, and this is gonna be my first plan of attack to make this quicker, I know this machine automatically puts dwells in here for me and there's a menu for them. So I wanna find all those and try to cut them down as much as I can, as quick as I can. You don't wanna just tell the machine's collet to close and then go on, right? You wanna give it like a quarter of a second to close the collet to let the next operation happen. So this is my actual first time going through all these and tweaking these in to make this as fast as possible. So you're gonna be learning with me a little bit here. So when I put my mouse over it, I can actually see what the operation is and it says close pick off spindle collet. So I know that they're gonna put a dwell in here. So when I click on it, I can see G4, which stands for dwell, X of pound 3032. Well, what is pound 3032? Well, luckily they have a variable list for you. So if you go up here and you click on variables and you scroll down to pound 3032, we'll see that that dwell in this program is 0.3 seconds. So instead of being 0.3, I'm gonna make this 0.1. 
which is only two hundredths of a second, which means we're already 20% of the way there if this works. So we're going to backspace and put 0.1 enter. Now if I say OK and I hit regenerate, why is that not faster? Is it waiting on something? Oh, it is. Yeah, see, that's not going to matter. That's stupid. I look like an idiot right now. This is on camera. Wow, so that's not going to matter because this beginning of the cutoff is taking too much time still. So I need to speed this up as well. Again, it's kind of nice. Like you think that dwell would just get you out of trouble here, but the timeline stays accurate. Because this cutoff operation is taking so much time, that dwell hasn't affected anything. So now I also need to speed that up because it's synchronized to this beginning of our cutoff operation. It didn't do us any good. So let's click on this. So right now we're feeding to X of 0.3937, which is 10 millimeter for all you people who use metric. But we're doing that at F of pound 3002. So again, let's go to our variables page, find 3002 and speed that up a little bit to save more time. So if I go over to variables, I go to pound 3002, I'm going six thousandths per revolution. Well, because it's brass, I bet you I can go eight thousandths per revolution and it won't hurt anything. So now we'll say, okay, we'll regenerate. So now it's saying we're at 7,700 milliseconds. So we're at 7.7 .7 seconds. I want to get seven seconds in because again, that's a whole week of time if we get this to work. So let's take a look at what happens here. So this appears to be holding it up. So that's also going at F of 3002. That was already affected. Right here is gonna be the end, but that's, it's already cut off there. So that doesn't really matter. F X 3002, so there's nothing. So no dwells in here, but it's saying G1, G100, which is rapid on this machine. So right here is the biggest, longest operation on the back. Hopefully I can get this down because 0.7 seconds is a lot, but we're gonna go for it right here. So. This is our boring operation. So this is going to be a little bit different than G-code you're probably used to looking at. You're probably used to seeing G1 and G0. In this machine, G1, G100 equals G0. Nothing too crazy here. Just know that when you're reading this. So the first thing I can see this is doing is it's feeding to Z of zero at five thousandths per revolution. Let's just make that 10. It's cutting air, right? Nothing too crazy about that. And then it does the chamfer and it bores everything at 2,000 per rev. Well, let's go to 3,000 per rev. And then it rapids out to Z of 0. 0.5. Yeah, let's see what just speeding that up a little bit did right there. Got it down. We're at 7,702 milliseconds still. So that sped it up, but it didn't change anything. So what else is going on here? Nope, that's nothing. Advanced part catcher. So we have execute and then we have G4X of pound 3018. So we have another dwell. So let's take a look at that. So if we go to this operation right here, we can see this is our advanced part catcher operation. Inside of this, I found another dwell, G4X of pound 3018. Well, let's take a look at what that variable is and what it does. So we'll exit out of this and we'll go to our variables menu. And here we'll go to pound 3018, part catcher feed timer. This is where you can get a little bit dangerous, right? Because you really want to be careful when you're just firing pneumatics with M codes and stuff like that and then making movements right after them. It can be really dangerous to just fire something and then tell the machine to move right after it. It's always good to give it a little bit of time. But my middle name is Danger, so we're gonna lower this to a super low number and see how much faster it can make our cycle time. So if we'll go from 0.4, to point 0.1, so that should be another three hundredths of a second right there. We'll say OK, and we'll regenerate our code and see if that saved us any time. Out of range. OK, so it doesn't like that. The machine doesn't want us to make it that fast. It says the minimum value is 0.2 seconds. So whatever, we're still going to get 0.2 seconds out of it if we go to the minimum, so I'm going to change it back to that. It's kind of a cool thing. The machines, you know, get in your back, making sure you're not doing anything too dangerous, because us crazy Americans will do that. So we'll go to point 0.2, we'll say OK, and now we'll regenerate our code. All right, now look what's happened here. Our sub pickoff is no longer our longest operation. I think it's actually been that way for two updates I've done. I just noticed it though. Now it looks like our groove up here in station seven might be the longest operation. It is. After that, it's going to be our rough turn and our tap. So now we know we need to make this, the grooving operation, faster. So let's do that. This shouldn't be too hard. So to give you an idea of what this groove tool is doing, I'm going to really quickly run through its operations in the 2D simulation of this software. So let's go to view outline. And I'm just going to hit next code. So the blue line is where I'm at currently. So if I hit next code, I feed down, I wrap it up, come over, feed down, wrap it up, come over, feed down, wrap it up, come over, so on and so forth. It pockets out that groove, breaks the edges, wrap it to the back of the part and does a little bit of cutting. And then I deburr the thread in the back and I deburr the thread in the front. All right, so that's all the groove tool's doing. So because this is brass, I'm pretty sure I could speed this up very easily. For example, we know the first cut we do here is just a plunge down, it's just a rough cut. I'm going at six and a half thou per rev. Screw it, let's go up to nine. See what happens. Let's go up to nine thousandths per rev. 
on our rough plunging. I'll scroll down here. This is the feed rate for the finishing. It's 4 thou per rev. Let's go to 5 thou per rev. So right here, I want to see what this is, right? I don't know exactly what this is. G1 X of 17, which is the seventh X axis, feeds down at 3 thou per rev. So I'm going to find this in my view outline. F of 0.003, am I missing it? Am I missing it? Right here. So I can see, it says G1 X of 17 equals 0.5 F of 0.03. So I'm going to 0.5 at 3 thou per rev, which shows me I'm doing the back of the part. I'm just feeding down right here. I see no reason why that couldn't be 4 thou per rev. So let's do it. ISO code. We'll go to 4 thousands per revolution. Now we've sped it up a lot. So let's just see what we've done here. I'll hit OK and now I'll hit regenerate. So now we're at 7,462 milliseconds. So that means we are at about seven and a half seconds for our cycle time. But this is no longer our longer operation. This looks like it might be, but I don't know. Oh, like I said earlier, it could be our tap that's the longest operation. Immediately that rough turn behind the thread. I'm just going to speed that up. I know it's rough turning. I can double my feed rates and not have any consequences. So we're going to go in and do that. So F of 0.008, let's go to 10. No, let's go to 11. Let's live on the edge. Now that we're at 11, like mad men, instead of finishing at 5 thou per rev, we're also going to go up to seven. Hit OK, hit regenerate. We should be getting pretty close to like 7.2 seconds if I had to guess. Let's see if we did it, guys. And look at that, 7,094 milliseconds. So we have taken an entire second off this part, which like I said earlier is 138 hours of runtime. That is insane. I climbed to the tallest hill that I could find here at Titans of CNC to thank you, James Watts, for joining our channel and supporting free education. Now, if you want to get shouted out in a Titans of CNC video, hit that join button down below. You'll also get a bunch of perks and you'll get to chat with us on our Discord. You'd be crazy not to join, right? All right, now back to the video. Now I have to get down from here. No, I'm not doing that. And that is one thing I love about this software on this machine. It allows you to go through and see what process is the longest without having to run the part over and over and over and tweak it in. Well, I did save the one second that I wanted to save. I did this in real time too in front of you guys. This was not scripted. So this is kind of a testament to how sweet this software really is. It allows you to look at each individual station and see what's taking the most amount of time and tweak it without having to run part after part after part to see what's really taking the most amount of time. So that's pretty cool. I got a hand at the Tornos. That makes running an eight spindle machine a lot Lot easier so um, yeah good job Tornos your machines rule okay so we have sped up the cycle time now let's press start and run it turn this machine back on but let's see what these changes look like now you probably won't see too much of a difference in this running because eight seconds to seven seconds isn't gonna be too drastic of a change for you on camera so everything's on we're ready you guys filming cycle start go baby go All right, well, it looks like everything ran good. Those cycle time changes did work. If you haven't already, make sure you guys check out our website, cncexpert.com. If you're making parts in seven seconds, you should be able to showcase your skills to the whole world. And you can do just that on our platform made by machinists for machinists. So make sure you get on there and check it out. Oh, look at that. Money. So yes, delivering a lot of parts on time is important, but it's also really important that your parts are still in spec. So. Even though you speed up your cycle time by a second, you want to make sure that's not destroying anything or there's no burrs anywhere or anything. And I've been extremely impressed by no matter how much you speed this up, it still doesn't change anything on the part. That's pretty cool. Well, that is it for our video today, guys. I showed you kind of how to lay out your processes on a Swiss machine, whether it's an eight spindle or not. These kind of tactics will work for that. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and don't be stupid, ring that notifications bell. Do I look fat? No, go. Don't show him, you're gonna ruin it. Can you hear me now, Ben? Calling Moscow, calling Moscow. This doesn't make any sense. How the did I even get this job? Oh, hi. <laughs> I used to be an apps guy, it's okay. What, does it make you nervous when I move this one foot? <gasps> no. Nothing dangerous about this.